Okay, we're looking at uh, functions when they have a max or where they have a max or a min. Okay, so when a function has a max or a min, uh, a, a continuous differentiable function, meaning it, that it's connected and it's smooth, um, then it's where the derivative equals zero. Okay, so a local max is really what we're talking about. An overall max, a global max, is the absolute maximum y value the function has. Okay, a local max is just within a small area. Okay, so we have we have something like this. So a, a local maximum or minimum of a continuous differentiable. Differentiable means smooth. Continuous means connected. Function. The the derivative is zero. Okay, so the derivative is zero locally around here because the slope of that tangent is zero. It's horizontal. So at that maximum slope of the tangent is horizontal. So that's a local maximum then at a, at x equal to a. And the local maximum is c. Okay, so here is a point, so at x equal to b, you have a local minimum, and the local minimum is d. But this function does not have an absolute maximum because it seems to go on forever. And it does not have an absolute minimum because it seems to go on forever. However, if this was to curl back up and continue up like that, like a quartic, then there would be an absolute minimum, and it would be over here somewhere. Okay? So to determine whether a local minimum or maximum is an absolute minimum or maximum, it has to be the lowest possible y value or the highest possible y value for the function. Okay? So in this case here, um, we know that f primed at a equals 0 because the, the slope of the tangent there is zero. f prime at b equals zero because the slope of the tangent there is zero. Uh, f of a equal to c is a local maximum. f of b equal to d is a local minimum. So d is a local min, c is a local max. If the derivative is zero at a point, then you don't necessarily have a max or a min. Okay, So if the derivative is zero at a point, you might not have a max or a min, but at a max or a min, the derivative would be zero. Okay? Here's an example where the derivative is zero because f of x equal to x cubed is 3x squared. Set that equal to zero, and that equals zero at x equal to zero. So at x equal to zero here, the slope of that tangent is zero. But it's not a local max or a min. Call that an inflection point on that one. Okay, so there are cases where the derivative might be zero and you don't have a max or a min. So we have to investigate a little bit more. You have to investigate around this. Okay? So how to determine uh, whether or not you have a max or a min or neither. Okay? So in this case, f prime of 2 equals zero. Well, you check out values just before 2 and just after 2. And you check out the value at 2. So if f of 2 is greater than f of these two values here, 2 plus or minus h, choose whatever value you want. If f of 2 is bigger than f of these two values, it would be less, then you have a, a local max. If f of 2 is less than the values of these two here, okay, 2 plus h, 2 minus h, then you have a local min. If f of 2 is in between the two, okay, so f of 2 minus h, which is down here, which is lower, and f of 2 plus h, which is up here, that's a higher y value, and that's in between the two, then you have neither. So that's one way to check. Okay. Another way to check okay, is by using the derivatives. Okay, so the derivative is zero here. We know that. If the slope of the tangent is positive here and negative here, then it's increasing. So the slope of the tangent is positive, then it's increasing to this point, the function. And then if the slope of the tangent is negative on the right, 
and it's decreasing afterwards, so it has to be going through a maximum. So the slope of the tangent is positive, which means the derivative just to the left is, well, actually for that case, um, yeah, so the derivative just to the left is greater than zero, okay? And the derivative just to the right is less than zero, then you're going to have a maximum. In this case here, if the derivative produces a negative on the left side, okay, so f of 2 minus h is less than 0, and f prime of 2 plus h is positive, so the derivative is positive, the tangent's up there, then you know it's decreasing into that point, then increasing afterwards, okay? So you could check the derivatives at points just around there. Sometimes the derivative function is easier to check. Okay? And that would mean you'd have a minimum. Now, if both of them are greater, like this one, so f primed is greater than zero, the slope of the tangent is positive, just before and just after, then it's not going to increase and then decrease. So if it's positive on both sides, you don't have a local max or, max or a min. Okay? Also, if it's negative on both sides, okay? so if it was to come down like this, and go like this, okay? then it would be negative on both sides. So if it's the same sign on both sides of that point, then you don't have a local max or a min either. Okay? Method three doesn't always work for all the cases. So f double prime, okay, the rate of change of the rate of change is less than zero, then you have a maximum. If the second derivative at two is greater than zero, then you have a minimum, okay? So the reason for that is, well, what's, so the slopes of the tangents here are negative, then going to positive. So they're actually increasing, okay? So the uh, second derivative at this point is going from, actually it's going from positive to negative, sorry. So the second derivative at this point, because it's going from positive to negative, the slopes of the tangents are actually decreasing, okay? So positive to negative. So the rate of change is negative there. So if the second derivative is negative, then you have possibly uh, a local max. Here, the slopes of the tangents are negative, then changing to positive. So that's increasing when you go from a negative number to a positive number. So at this point here, the slopes of the tangents are increasing. So the derivative of that is going to be positive because the rate of change is going up. So the second derivative would be greater than zero. In this case, it's unknown. You can't really tell. Okay, so um, it's not the most reliable, reliable test. In these two cases, you can tell, but when it's zero, you can't tell whether you have a maximum, minimum, or neither. Okay, um, that's it for that part. So here is uh, an example. So if f of x equals this cubic function here, then, and you want to find the maxes and mins of it, okay? So this is something in advanced functions we couldn't tell. Now that we have calculus, we can tell this. So here is the cubic. Take the derivative, set it to zero so that we can find out where the slopes of the tangents are zero. So f prime of x equals zero is this. Factor that we get this. Okay. Now, another way of doing that, instead of factoring it, is use the quadratic formula, but you're going to get the same answer. So here are the answers. So that x is negative 5 thirds, and 3 is going to be where the maxes and mins are. It's not right in the middle. So right in the middle of 0 and 5 is 2.5. But the local min here is happening at x equal to 3, more towards the 5. Okay. Um, so we know what this cubic looks like because it has a positive leading coefficient. And so we're going to 
basically go with that shape and from that we can tell whether it's a local max or local min where, where it is. So those are the x coordinates. How do you find the y coordinates? Sub them into the original function and then you can find the y. So at negative 5 thirds f of that is going to give you 14.8 approximately. Okay, 400 over 27. Plug in 3 into the original function and you get negative 36. Okay, so here's what the graph looks like. There's the local minimum at 3, negative 36. Local minute maximum at negative 5 thirds and 14.8.